This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This chapter deals with further aspects of chargeable gains with regard to companies. Um, you should have watched the three capital gains tax chapters, um, which are earlier in the manual, um, in order to be able to watch this with some knowledge. Um, I will assume that you have done that. Um, you may want to pause the recording at this stage and go back um, because I have assumed certain amounts of knowledge. We will do a bit of recap, but I will have assumed that you've watched those capital gains tax chapters because a lot of the information in this chapter is a repeat of that, but obviously relates specifically to um, limited companies. So we're going to look at um, Part disposals and chattels, and non-wasting chattels. So if you sell part, but not all of an, um, uh, an asset, then the allowable cost of the part of the asset disposed of working, um, as we saw in individuals, chapter 12, and it's A over A plus B, where A is the proceeds and B is the value remaining. And you use the same one for company, but of course, um, you've got indexation that needs to go um, with that. So example number one, just as a recap and to include the indexation, we've got ST owns 10 hectares of land, which originally cost 26,000 in March 2015. ST sold two hectares of the land in March 23 for 16,000 and the remaining eight hectares were valued at 34,000. What is the gain on those two hectares? And you've got an indexation factor there. And you should have watched the previous chapters um, for the corporation tax, which explains what an indexation factor is and where it goes and when it ends. I'll give you a hint, that is where it ends. So let's have a look at how that would look in our computation. Again, we are looking for proceeds less cost equals gain. Proceeds are 16,000. Now the cost. Let's do a little working over here. You should have that in a separate place. So we've got the original cost multiplied by A over A plus B, where A is the proceeds over the proceeds and the value of the remaining pieces of land. So that's how you would do it. Cost times A over A plus B, which gives us £8,320. Put that in your calculator. Make sure you agree with me. Make sure you know where 8320 came from. And in the exam, you'd be able to do that for yourself, which gives us an unindexed gain of that. Of 7680 now we must then do indexation allowance which is deducted now the factor from the question was that make sure you make sure you don't go past December 17 we're going to multiply that by the cost make sure you multiply it by the cost and not the figure that you've got there okay make sure you put it by the cost which gives us £2,238. Again, please put that in your calculator and make sure you understand what it is. It might be worth when you've finished watching this bit, you pause, go back to the question, do it yourself to make sure that you understand and it looks exactly the same as mine, which gives us an indexed gain of 5442 pounds excellent so as i say it might be worth stopping that now you do it yourself and then make sure that you get the same figures um, that i did don't forget indexation cannot create um, a loss chattels exactly the same as it is with uh individuals Okay, and in the individual section, we had um, 
exempt. What happens if you make a profit? What happens if you make a loss? And normal CGT. We, we went through that in quite some detail in that chapter, so you need to, uh, to have a look um, at, at that to make sure that you're happy with how that works. I'm not going to do any questions here because there's plenty of questions in that chapter that deals with um, chattels. But there is one aspect that we didn't deal with when we dealt with individuals. It is very similar for companies and individuals. So we're dealing with it here. What happens if we've got a damaged, lost or destroyed asset? So if it is damaged, you've got an asset that is damaged and compensation or insurance money is received as a result, then this is treated as a part disposal using the same formula. OK, got that. So you damage something, you get some insurance money, part disposal using the same formula. Now, if the money is received and it is not used to restore the asset, then you have a normal part disposal with the market value of the part retained equating to the value of the asset in its damaged state. If the insurance money is fully used to restore the asset, then you can elect to have the proceeds deducted from the cost of the asset for a future calculation thereby deferring any gain when the insurance money is received. So you've got no cash in hand. Two situations. What happens if you don't put the money in? And what happens if you fully put the money in? So we're going to look at two examples here. Example number two and example number three. So... MI Limited bought a painting, 1st of April 2000, cost them £10,000. The painting was damaged on the 1st of May when it was worth £50,000. After damage, it was only worth £25,000. The insurance proceeds received were £30,000, not used OK, not used. So that's the first example. Let's see what that looks like when we put it into our model answer. This is where the money was not used. OK, proceeds from the question. Cost using part disposal rules. That gives us an unindexed gain. So the cost, this is the original cost. This is the proceeds. This is the proceeds. And that's the market value damaged. That's the rule for not used. And then indexation times the cost gives us an extra 2,995 to deduct from our capital gains tax computation, giving a chargeable gain of 21,000. 550. That's where it is not used. So have a look at example number three. We've got Daisy here. Daisy bought a painting in April 2000 for £10,000. The painting was damaged on the 1st of May when it was worth 50 and after damage it was worth different up figure there. 1st of July insurance proceeds of eight were received. All the insurance proceeds were used to restore the painting. Assuming Daisy elects for the proceeds to be rolled over against the cost of the painting, calculate the base cost of the painting in a future disposal. Now, this one, you can see multiple choice question because they're asking you for the base cost because there's no CGT. Whereas this one, you could see this as part of a larger, um, either a CT question as part of that, or more likely as a um, part of a limited, uh, an individual CGT question. Because quite often there'll be three or four, maybe even five different aspects of capital gains that somebody's done during the year that needs to be dealt with. So let's look at the example for um, answer number three. 
when the proceeds are received there is no chargeable gain as the company has elected to roll over the proceeds that's a claim you have to make okay when the painting then is eventually sold that's your original cost but we have to take off the insurance proceeds that we've received okay you can't have all the cost because you've had some of that cost back so this is the remainder of the cost and that will then be added in as the original cost to the um, so when we have a uh, when we sell it it would be proceeds whatever less the cost okay now it says then these restoration costs themselves can be deducted so we've got restoration costs of 8,000 that would also go in but look it's exactly the same figure but it's different because we've applied the rules we need the base cost because we've elected to be for it to be rolled over but those costs in themselves are an allowable expense uh, when we eventually do a capital gains tax uh, computation on that now what happens if anything is destroyed or lost so if an asset is destroyed with no compensation or insurance money the disposal will result in a capital loss obviously because it's um you've had you've got zero proceeds you've got proceeds less cost equals gain proceeds are nil that will be uh, the, the situation uh, the date of disposal is the date of any insurance money received now that's important because you might have indexation if it's a limited company and you'll need to know what month it is if the insurance money is used to buy a replacement asset within 12 months the gain can be deferred if only part of the insurance money is used to buy a replacement then some of the gain will be taxed immediately and some will be deferred these are unusual questions in an exam because we're talking the edge of things here you're always going to get in any exam core topics that will always come up and those core cool topics are in the if you look in the review chapters there's a review chapter after income tax there'll be a, there was a review chapter after capital gains tax there's a review chapter after corporation tax they will give you the core topics you must know they're always going to be peripheral things around the edge which you should know and will get you extra marks in the exam these are one of the peripheral topics example number four FC Limited bought an asset for 23,000 in June 2015. It was destroyed in October 2022, which is a shame. Insurance proceeds of 34 were received in March 2023, and they spent 30,000 of it replacing the asset. So that's one of these questions. Some was taxed immediately, some will be deferred because they've only used part. Calculate the gain and the base cost of the new asset indexation factor is 0 0.250 let's have a look at what the model answer looks like and really with these because they are peripheral it is important that you go through and that you understand how we've got to the model answer and and how to do the calculations but there are some things that are more important than others but obviously this is testing your ability to do proceeds less cost equals gain so proceeds so this was from the insurance in march 23 might be worth putting the date in there so that you can see that clearly cost was in june 2015 gives us an unindexed gain of 11. Uh, indexation allowance, that's the factor from the question. That's the cost, 23, which gives us an extra 5,750, giving us 5,250 of the chargeable gain. Now, some of the money was used to replace this here note. Proceeds have only partially been used to buy a replacement asset. Therefore, £4,000 being 34 of the proceeds 
less £30,000 of the gain is charged immediately and the balance is deferred. So £4,000 is taxed immediately or will go in the income the um, tax computation either for a company as a gain, a chargeable gain and pay corporation tax or individually that would go into your capital gains tax computation and you pay CGT on it. And the replacement of the, this is therefore the balancing figure which also needs to be used to work out the base cost for uh, any future disposal. So we've covered some new topics in this chapter, particularly with the assets destroyed or uh, where we've had um, insurance claims where things have been damaged. Um, but the other parts of the chapter are a repetition of uh, the individual sections. So I would go through this chapter again. See if you can find in the um, BPP manual questions on these for the multiple choice. See, spot them out, see if you can find them and just do those to make sure that it's gone in here. And we do have a practice question number 26.